Summer is finally here, and with it comes a month responsible for a yearly landslide of new game announcements. June features a lot of massive expansions to AAA games and indie titles alike, as well as games releasing on previously untapped platforms. It's a month capable of a lot of surprises. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and here's everything we think is worth checking out in June 2024. June kicks off with the Gold Road for Elder Scrolls Online, a brand new expansion to the already massive world of Tamriel. Dive into the West Weald, a brand new zone home to the wealthy Kolovian Imperials and the city of Skingrad, now beset by Daedric incursions and the encroaching jungles of Valenwood. Whispers of the return of a long forgotten Daedric prince sweep the land. Investigate this threat through all new Mirror Moor incursion events, the brand new 12 player Lucent Citadel trial, and all new ways to customize your skills with the addition of scribing and skill styling, fundamentally impacting the way you not only choose to play, but stand out from other players as well. Clocking in at $40, this marks the eighth major expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online and is part of the Shadow Over Morrowind multi-year story arc. Players on PC for Epic and Steam won't have to wait much longer, as this drops for them on June 3rd, releasing later that month on June 18th for Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PS4, and PS5. After nearly 10 years, June 4th marks the conclusion of the light and dark saga for Destiny and Destiny 2, The Final Shape, Livid's ultimate guilty pleasure of a game. Pursue the witness in the Traveler and explore the Pale Heart, a massive new location twisting our past with the very real dark future ahead. For the first time ever, players will have access to the brand new Prismatic subclass, allowing Guardians to combine the powers of Arc, Solar, Void, Status, and Strand, and wield them as their own unique deadly creations. You'll need it too, as brand new enemies in the form of the Dread blanket the path ahead, aiming to stop you and make real the Witness's terrifying final vision of the universe. This wraps up the story we've been waiting for a decade to pay off, so all eyes are on Bungie for not only how the Light and Dark Saga wraps up, but what comes next. It's not often we highlight an early access title within our game releases, but Songs of Silence is looking very much like a title to take notice of sooner rather than later. This is a new turn-based 4X strategy game featuring auto battle mechanics set in a fantasy world threatened by the all-devouring silence. If you're anything like us, when you hear the term auto battler, you're probably quick to dismiss the game, but the term itself does the genre a massive disservice. Instead, look at it for all its parts, featuring a dynamic mix of turn-based kingdom management, hero development, auto-battling, and real-time battles, all while incorporating the Cards of Fate, a unique take on a card system where heroes and locations on the map can take action via these cards in real time to influence the outcome of a whole host of conditions during battles. The game's art direction simply looks gorgeous, and at a macro level, features an extensive narrative-driven single-player campaign, as well as several competitive and cooperative multiplayer modes. It genuinely feels like a mix between Songs of Conquest and Clash of Clans, with other unique systems helping blend the two genres seamlessly. You won't have to wait too long to give this one a spin either, featuring both a demo you can check out now and releasing into Early Access on June 4th. Smack dab in the middle of June is Summer Game Fest, the premier video game event of the summer. It's an exciting time for games, especially when 2024, by all normal standards, is a relatively quiet year. The reason it's on this list is because we have no doubt that Jeff Keighley is going to reveal some incredible new games, some of which might even come out in June. It's impossible to say at this moment, but looking at the lineup of developers and publishers with a presence at Summer Game Fest, yeah, something is certainly cooking. On June 7th, the main stage show will go live at 5 p.m. Eastern. This is where you can expect to see a majority of the major reveals. We actually did a full video with our predictions on what you might see on that main stage, so check that video out. 
On June 9th, expect to see some fireworks as Microsoft's main stage show goes live at 1 p.m. Eastern. We know a huge part of that showcase will be Call of Duty Black Ops 6, but with so many recent studio acquisitions, there's no telling what Microsoft could show up with. I'm fairly confident that we'll also see Avowed, the first-person fantasy RPG that was showcased heavily at last year's Game Awards. Don't sleep on other massive games either, like Fable, which we haven't seen in quite some time. On June 9th is also the PC gaming show. This isn't usually a huge showcase, but if you want to dive deeper on a certain game or check out what's coming up in the AA or indie world, this is where you'll see those games. Finally, on June 10th is the next Ubisoft Forward event. Expect to see a ton of new details about Assassin's Creed Shadows, which releases later this year, X Defiant, which is a new free-to-play shooter, and Star Wars Outlaws, which I think will have a huge presence during the showcase. Like I said, most games won't have a June release date, but I guarantee there will be at least a few surprises mixed in that are available to play almost instantly. For all you bloodsuckers out there on PS5 who have been patiently waiting in your crypts, V Rising, one of our favorite survival action RPGs of all time, is finally making its way onto consoles on June 11th. Your time is almost here to dive into Verderon, terrorize some humans, and discover what it means to start out as prey, only to become the apex predator. You'll explore an expansive world across six major zones, taking on 57 unique bosses, all tainted with the blood of Dracula. As you conquer each one, you'll drink down their knowledge and propel your vampire forward, all while hopefully avoiding that unforgiving sunlight. You'll dynamically weave together a whole host of deadly weapons, abilities, and dynamic spell schools to harvest resources, claim territory, build that perfect castle, and seize the power only Dracula himself was thought to be capable of wielding. This is seriously one of the most polished and addicting survival games to date, and whether you love PvE or PvP, there is something here for everyone. Very few RPGs are more iconic than Kingdom Hearts, and come June 13th, Square Enix has decided that the Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3 collections will be finally making their way to PC on Steam for the very first time. If you're one of the thousands of players on Xbox or PC who have been holding out to dive into Kingdom Hearts for the first time, this is most likely your best opportunity to do so. These games are legendary, especially if you are a massive fan of Final Fantasy or Disney properties. You'll join Sora, the main protagonist and Keyblade wielder, as you travel to iconic Disney worlds with Donald Duck and Goofy in an attempt to stop the Heartless, manifestations of the darkness born in people's hearts by sealing each world's keyhole and restoring peace to the realms. You'll encounter a whole host of other massively iconic and memorable characters along the way from nearly every Disney and Pixar IP as you sink hundreds of hours across 10 massive experiences that make up the Dark Seeker saga. It's a generational series and one that is finally being made accessible to a whole host of players. In Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance, players embark on a harrowing journey through a desolate post-apocalyptic Tokyo. Chaos reigns and darkness threatens to consume the world, but as a newly awakened protagonist, your job is to navigate intricate moral dilemmas and forge alliances with both demons and humans alike to survive. The game features intense turn-based combat, but the real highlight is that players can recruit and command over 270 demons, so it's kind of like a monster capture game in a sense, but with some pretty dark undertones. In true JRPG fashion, the story is really at the center of the game, and believe it or not, there are actually two complete story paths that players can follow, both filled with conflicting and tragic choices, forcing you to confront the ideologies you're willing to fight for. Keep in mind the developers behind the game Atlas are also responsible for Persona, as well as Atrina Odyssey, so you know this is going to be good. Speaking of monster capture games, let's talk about Monster Hunter Stories. Unlike the traditional action-oriented gameplay of the main series, Monster Hunter Stories takes on a more RPG-centric approach, focusing on turn-based combat, exploration, and monster training. Players will explore a vast open world filled with various environments, ranging from lush forests to barren deserts, snowy mountains, and much more. Each area is inhabited by different types of monsters that players can encounter, battle, and potentially befriend. Unlike the real-time action combat of the mainline Monster Hunter games, Monster Hunter Stories features turn-based combat. Players engage in battles against wild monsters and other riders using a variety of weapons, skills, and abilities. Honestly, if you like monster capture games in general, but also follow the mainline Monster Hunter games, you might be interested in this one. 
When Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun first blasted onto the scene, 40k fans far and wide praised the retro-inspired Doom-like for its intense, fast-paced visceral action, synonymous with the Warhammer brand. Fast forward to June 18th and Bolt Gun is getting its very first expansion, Forges of Corruption. This features a brand new campaign spanning across five all new environments, such as the Grya Battlefields, Manufactorum, and Infested Demonic Forge. Within these locations are a whole host of new enemies, including Hellbrutes and Black Legion Havoc Marines. There are even two new weapons to add to your arsenal, the Multi Melta and the Missile Launcher, making the content that much more explosive this time around. If you enjoyed what Bolt Gun initially offered and wanted more, that's exactly what you're getting here. At the time of recording this video, the price still hasn't been set, but around the same time, we can also expect a smaller free update to go live for all players. Releasing into early access on June 18th, Soul Mass takes the open world survival concept and adds an interesting clan dynamic into the mix. As you play, you'll be able to find and break the will of NPCs you find out in the world and bring them into your clan. The cool thing is, not only are these new followers autonomous, you can send them out to help you hunt, gather, and craft, but you could also seamlessly control them as if they were your main character. It's a cool dynamic, and when you consider the relatively deep RPG elements like skill trees and traits, it's actually kind of interesting that you have to manage an entire village worth of characters. At its core, the game's survival combat is pretty much what you'd expect from a game like this. You'll spend the early parts of the game exploring a massive open world, gathering resources, and building some bases. The progression takes you from the primal to the supernatural, and it all revolves around the raid boss encounters found in massive temples. Players will also have access to various masks, which grant them unique passive abilities that enhance specific aspects of combat. These are really the centerpiece of what makes the action unique in the game, and will be something for players to hunt down and unlock. Ultimately, the sandbox game is entering its early access period and will live and die based on the cycle of feedback and development as Soul Mass looks to build out not only its PvE systems, but also its optional PvP clan warfare as well. Rounding out our list is easily the most anticipated DLC of the year, Elden Ring Shadow of the Air Tree, which drops on June 21st. It's been over two years since players explored the lands between, and this time we'll be following in the footsteps of Mikola as we explore the Land of Shadows. This is the first and only DLC that we'll be releasing for Elden Ring, and with over 50,000 concurrent players still logging in daily on Steam, I have no doubt this game will surge back to popularity. The game's director, Hidetaki Miyazaki, revealed that the new zone would be about the size of Limgrave, the starting zone in the base game. The DLC will feature eight new weapon categories and will include over 10 new bosses, with some of those bosses comparable in difficulty to Millennia from the base game. As you might expect, there's only been a few trailers released about the DLC, and they're loaded with lore, secret meanings, and obscure dialogue. Classic FromSoft. Bottom line, if you've been waiting to return to Elden Ring, the DLC looks to build on that impressive foundation. Another month, another lineup of awesome looking games. So if you like anything on our list, you know what to do. Drop us a like, consider subscribing. And be sure to check back in for our full coverage of Summer Game Fest in the second half of the year. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.